Hey, it's Aaron. I thought you guys might want to see how I made the beat for my new single Madhouse, which is out now, so go stream it, and if you've already streamed it, stream it again. As many times as you can, because it helps a lot. Okay, let's hear the beat. <laughs> Okay, so as you can hear, there's like a lot of layers in here. So I'll kind of just give you a rundown. Basically what everything in the melody started with is this piano sequence that I played. So basically, see if I remember it. Mm, this it. Okay, so obviously I played it with a little more confidence the first time around but it's been a while since i made this beat because the song is now out so okay so let's hear the piano sequence okay so you'll probably notice well maybe somebody will notice that it's not perfectly quantized but it's very slight offset from the bar line and in this case i i liked it but generally my ocd just i really need to snap it to that grid line i need it to be on that grid line like snap to it but i left it natural for this one and this all came from analog lab which is amazing and this is the american upright standard i basically just increased the hammer hardness the hammer is like the it's like a metal foot looking thing that basically hammers down every time you hit a key it's like in the back of the piano and i like that acoustic sound that that hammer strike has so i increased that did a little bit of eq mix and then basically had my modified you know standard grant and uh we're in the key of b flat minor i feel like the song key has a lot to do with the personality of the song so i, I always pick that first B flat minor has a kind of like eerie, you know, quality to it. It's almost like a little haunted, it's a little wonky, but it also has kind of an upbeat nature to it. You know, it's not, it's not like Dracula or like, you know, real sad. It's just kind of like a little unhinged. So this is a really, probably my favorite key to make a beat in is B flat minor. So that's what I went with this. And, uh, you know, if you're not setting your key in your project and you're not setting your project tempo you you need an intro course you can't do that don't do that kids set your set your key in your bpm okay i don't care if you're working in pretty loops or fl whatever it's called now ableton whatever you're in set your key in your project tempo and play in that key and if you don't know how it's really easy if you're already hitting buttons you can do it i promise okay so now that that public service announcement has been said uh, let's dive into what i did with that piano stem once i played it out so once i played it and i liked it i basically uh went back into um analog lab and i created uh, several other melodic sequences this one was from a modified glockenspiel that um, i found really liked and just modified it right there inside the synth plugin until it was kind of like a wah type of sound i you know i used the modulation wheel until I got it just like I liked it. And that's what you hear. Then I did the same thing with a um, piano pad. This was in, I believe, Arturia, and it was called The Art of Chill. And it was a piano, but kind of sounded underwater. Uh, I enhanced that with some stereo mixing that I then bounced into the actual stem. Um, I try not to do that too much because Guy, my engineer, gets not so happy about it when I've like bounced stuff in place and he has no control over it later. But sometimes when you know you want it like that, do what you gotta do. Um, so this is the Art of Chill Piano that I modified. I don't know if you can hear that, but... So basically what I did here 
I use Sooth too. This is a great plugin. Um, basically, it takes uh, it takes different transients that are harsh or causing problems in the mix, like masking or some other issue, uh, and it tames those specific frequencies. And as you can see, it works in real time. It's a great plugin. I love it for both boosting and controlling harmonics. A lot of times when something just isn't sitting right in the mix, but it's not too loud, you know, you can you might wonder like, why is this not sitting? It might be something to do with like the harmonics, you know, that can cause all sorts of problems downstream. I like Sooth 2 a lot. It kind of helps both tame and sort of uh, enhance the ones you want. And that was basically it for my leads. Um, with the exception of the complete change up that happens in the beginning of verse two, but I will get to that last, it's my favorite part. Okay, so now that the leads are out of the way, I will show you the bass and drums. Now this took me a minute. I used the step sequencer that is now inherent to Logic itself. It's just part of the DAW. And I expected it to be kind of subpar, but it ended up being really good. I recommend it. It's, it's very intuitive to use and um, you can get as complex with it as you want. So as you can see, I have quite the stack here. So instead of looking at it this way, I'm going to take you down into my original step sequencer section so that you can actually see the process. I call this wonky beat drum kit. So none of this sauce is swiped or whatever, whatever the kids are saying. It's all stuff that I just made from real basic stock stuff that I just, you know, found in the bottom of, of the internet, basically. And then I just heavily modify it and just do that in stages. And then I add it to my step sequencer. And then when that's done, uh, I start playing out sequences. So uh, I'll let you hear that. No, I won't. Hang out a second. Nope, not yet. Oh, here we go. Too many folders. Okay, so as you can see, this is my kick. Okay, and then I have my snare, which with my snare, I like it to be on real even intervals. Like I like my snare generally on the third. You'll notice this doesn't exactly look like it's on the thirds, but that's because we're at 150 BPM. So just, you know, in short, that means that basically everything that, that looks like, you know, is six is just, is really three. So you'll see right here. So as you can see, I have it on the three, one and two and three right here. And that's where I like my snares. So I don't worry too much about how they sound as long as they sound like a snare and not like, you know, crickets or whatever. But uh, I just need it to be like in a consistent spot, just rhythmic backbone stuff. And then the hats, I got creative with these, you know, oh man, what did I do here? Okay. So these, I basically just took them and I would do some repeats. Like here, you can see three. That means that I, I did a little triplet with them. I changed the velocity. You can see some are faster and slower. Well, to, sort of like faster and slower. It's, it's really more like louder and quieter, actually. But you can also see that I have set the root to BB. Up here, it's G sharp, and that's because some of these, some of the sub didn't really translate very well when it was in A sharp, which is the same as B flat. So I put it in G sharp, and that's still in the same key, so it's all good. But I set these to B because they were working just fine. And then this is my perk snare. It's like a little slap effect. This works basically to accent some of the offbeats. So you can see one and two and three, three and four. So got it right on the fours here. And, uh, you know, it just kind of helps give it a little lift right before the end of the bar. Okay, so then snaps. So just to keep the energy high. And then we have the fill. I like this because it sounds a little like a like a cash register or something. But uh, originally, I think this was some sort of perk, but I just affected it until it sounded like that, and I liked it. So I went ahead and put it in the sequencer. And then basically the entire arrangement was just adding, you know, dropping some of these elements at times and then adding them back in. And that's kind of my process is to create the full version first and then to assume that in the arrangement process, I'm going to thin it out in places and use some as alternates or variations. And that works really good for me. I like to see the entire thing in a stack. I like to hear it all together and then, you know, edit it down from there. So then I did my 808s and my subs. So I'll let you hear. 
This is my lead. Okay, this window's way too high. All right, and then this I called um, my reasonable sub because it was a little bit higher pitched and then you can see I kind of pitched it up in a few instances so that it'd be sort of a harmonic layer and not so much, you know, deep, broken speaker kind of, you know, vibrating low end. I, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a type that some people like, but I don't like it when it sounds like my speakers are broken. I feel like that's the wrong kind of of sub. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, this is my reasonable one with my lead. The first little wow wow that you hear, that's the pitch change that I did right here in the sequencer. I put it up to A sharp and the first octave, which is an octave above the typical sub range, which is usually zero. But I find that it can be kind of an interesting layer. So I like to layer my sub. This is the alternate kick, which happens in sequences off and on, usually right after the main 808 lead. So, see, it makes a link, da, 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 da. And then with my reasonable layer, Okay, so those those were my main subs, but of course I couldn't stop there because I definitely have trouble knowing when to stop. I will overcreate a beat every time, but that's okay. You can always edit down. It's much better to edit down than it is to try to add in once the moment is passed, you know. So anyway, this is another layer. This is the short wah. It's just mostly just like a vibe layer, I guess. very intermittent. I wanted it to happen just on the beginning of each bar, you know, so that it would just be sort of like that hard hit that just happens subtly. This, I felt like this 808, something went wrong when whoever made it, made it. They made it sound like, uh, I don't know, like a rubber band breaking. So I changed it a bunch, made it my own, and it ended up sounding like a guitar a little bit. So I call this guitar-ish. So believe it or not, that that was supposed to be, you know, an 808 at one point before I got to it. Okay, so this is another layer. It's just right there on the, you know, first beat of the bar. Just a low growl, which goes with the low thump. And so you can hear them together. And then separate. Okay, and then call this a DJ drop. Yeah. It's like, boo. You know, it kind of reminds me of one of those like trailers like this summer kind of thing, you know. So anyway, I put that in there just for like effect, I guess. And this is this is the sub that I reversed, liked it a lot and threw it in there as a sort of like backwards hit. So it kind of leads you into that at that impact. I thought that was kind of nice. So I left that and then you can hear it all together. That's my rhythm section. It took me a while, but I was really happy with it, especially once it got arranged. I felt like it really came together nicely. And uh, then the last part is the effects. These are usually the last things I add in, but they end up being the part I debate over the most, you know? It's like when the beat is full, like how do you add in that last bit of excitement? But in the end, I went with this, what I call the Andromeda riser, which came from the beginning of a vinyl record I think it might have just been kind of a screwed up, you know, vinyl. Maybe it was just too old or maybe I had my speed set wrong. But this is what it ended up sounding like after a lot of effects. There we go. It was really hard to tell if they meant for it to sound like that. So, And then I have these vocal stems, which I actually got from Arcade. If you're not familiar with Output Arcade, uh, it can be a really great resource, especially if you're just starting out making beats. They have like a really satisfying version of making a beat where basically you can push keys on your keyboard and it'll play entire sequences for as long as you're holding it down. That's not what I did here. In this case, I was playing it like a piano, but instead of a piano sound, it was making these vocal sounds. So that's basically the difference. So I used it as uh, 
as a synth, but you can use Arcade as a sampler too, and it's got like tons of different... They should really pay me for this. I'm going to stop because they're not, they're not sponsoring me. But anyway, you can check it out if you need uh, a way to jump into making beats without knowing a lot. Okay, so this is, this is a sequence I played from a vocal sample pack. And you can hear it with the entire with the entire song. I kind of I played it live, so I played it I played it along with all the other elements already in place. So you can kind of hear hear the, the box stamps are riffing off of what's already happened. <laughs> Okay, so that's the part that I was going to get to next. Um, the next part I added was this, what I'm calling the bra bra I actually took it from this vinyl record. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I found this at the Half Price Books for like $2. It just looked like it was going to have some heat. Like it, man, like look. Like, I mean, would you not pick this up if you saw it? And it did not disappoint. Like the entire thing was just like these insane sort of chants, I guess. You know, and the guy was like so into it and he... He was like all out of breath. And like at one point, I think that he kind of fumbled and hit the microphone. You could like hear that. And it was all in there. So it was like very, you know, it was very visceral, you know. So I just basically uh, let my, on my vinyl recorder, I just played a lot of the album. Then I went through and I picked out tiny little chants I liked, threw it into the stock sampler, and then played out a sequence that went with what I already had in the beat. So you can hear that. I mean, it's just, it was, the whole thing was good. If I could have had like 20 minutes of this guy, I definitely would have just pure gold right there. And then I have this fast reverse, which originally was part of my percussion layers. But in the end, it was just a little above the percussion pitch, I guess, and really didn't need to be there the whole time. So I added it as an effect layer. Just kind of leads you into the next impact. Same with guitarish, which you've already heard. But with a little bit of effects on it. So those are my effect layers. And with all of that, the only part of the song that you guys have not heard yet is my favorite. Um, this is the breakdown, the complete change up that happens, that happens at the beginning of verse two. And I'll play that for you now. It's a total uh, orchestral stack that I, that I handcrafted just to create an emotional moment. So I hope you guys agree. I think it's amazing. something about like cellos and violins it just like they just they force emotion you know i feel everything when i hear that part and something about that half step up that happens i'm a sucker for it every single time so yeah so basically that com that's uh comprised of another set of pianos which i also used uh, analog lab to create and i use a little magic switch sometimes it's a great plugin it's free it's by baby audio also not sponsoring me but it's a great way to sort of premix your stems so that they sit right in the stereo field without kind of like, you know, fundamentally changing their, you know, their spread or their mid side. It's just a little, it's a minor shift in the stereo field so that things sit together. So I'll show you that really quick. this thing i use this on everything just magic switch is just like really good really just for instrumental stems is all i would use it on but it can be pretty helpful when you have a stack this thick and then i have like the high pan 
more magic switch, Sooth 2, and then the staccato. Little magic switch, Sooth 2, a little UAD, just because I had the resources left. Um. The violin. You know, Logic actually has some pretty decent strings. I, I would not say that that's true for all of their instruments, but strings, they kind of nail that. So that's what I went with for these. It looks like I went back on all my plug-in choices for this one, but... It's probably the right choice. And then this pad. Yeah, so that's that part, and it's my favorite. I think it's amazing. I love creating an emotional moment, especially towards the end of the song when everyone's kind of heard it already. You know, they're like, yeah, we know, we know. So I think it's just a really good way to break it up and also like, you know, bring in a little halftime because these beats are getting so fast. I mean, like this is 150, but you know, a moment of going 75 can really help you give an emotional performance. So that's why that's there. But yeah, that's the beat. And um, I will play the whole thing, not the whole thing, but I'll play the entire stack one more time for a second. And, you know, you can kind of just hear what it evolved into more or less. gets me every time okay well i hope you guys enjoyed that um thank you for watching and definitely go stream madhouse it's available everywhere music is streamed so go check it out spotify helps try spotify do it on spotify and thank you guys for uh being there and um i'll see you guys real soon sometimes all the talk it combines when it gets in my mind it's like i'm living in a madhouse hardships you don't want to solve shit just smoke yourself unconscious it's like I'm living in a madhouse, heartless They'll sell you on a promise, but no one's ever honest Cause I'm living in a madhouse Living, 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 living Living in a madhouse I told you success, but I'm all out of bread I won't try to flex, I'll boast when I'm fed You say you're up next, and with all that said You can't be the greatest till after I'm dead And let's just confess it's